Okay, we're live, everybody. Uh, broadcasting from my mom's basement here. No, I'm just kidding. But um, <laughs> we have Josh and PE and Richard and Serge and Tim. You'll hear a lot from them tonight. We're going to do a little quick and dirty discussion how heart rates can work in, in concert with Photoshop. And let me just get right down to business and show you what I started beforehand. This is like a cooking show, and I've got the meat already in the oven. So. Um, here we go. <laughs> so, can you all see my screen? Yeah. Yep. Nice. All right. So I did is I just I'm doing this up uh, from below, little cartoon style or comic style portrait. So I just sketched out the anatomy before we got started. Gonna put. I just love doing these '50s globe helmets on figures and. We had the Curiosity Mars rover, so I'm going to put a mountain in the background that looks like Olympus Mons and a, a big Martian mega mountain. Um, but we'll save that for later. For now, I'm just going to show you how I get started. So once you get sketch out your anatomy, or just the basic, I call it the blueprint of the drawing, I'm just kind of laying it out, not too worried about how that all looks. I just want everything in generally the right spot. What I'll do next is, and hopefully you can see me because I look frozen to myself, so you got to tell me if this is working or not. Um, I'm going to play the script and accelerate it so you can see how I got started. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. What, what I'm using right now is the, it's called the paint roller tool, and it, it just literally rolls paint on like you'd expect a paint roller if you're painting the walls of your house. And I use that tool because it gets a good amount of paint on the surface, and everything's real blocky with it, and you just can't worry too much about being pretty with it because it, it's kind of a dumb brush. And I like that in the beginning because then I just block everything with, with a big dumb brush and keeps me focused on the values and that's all I want to worry about in the beginning. Started dark and working toward the midtones now. And what I guess I probably should have said, and we're getting right to the end of the point where or the point where this video stops and then I can start painting right on top of this. I'll tell you two things about that in one second. Just the cool features of Art Rage. So Art Rage automatically captures this, or how did you do this? The, that's, the, that's the playback. Yeah, this playback deal is really cool. So there we are. We're done. And what that is, if you, I don't think I still can't see me, so I can't see what you can see. But if I go into the tools, or I'm sorry, if I go into the file right across the very top, there's a file menu. I can click file, and down toward the bottom it says record script. And what you can do is, as you're painting, Art Rage will record every action every piece of brush work as a script. And oh, that's so awesome. There's two really good things about this. One is the whole cooking show thing that we just did, right? Um, the other thing is that's awesome is you can, I believe, as I don't have an iPad, but I believe you can record a script with your iPad on that lower resolution screen and then mm -hmm. replay it as a larger resolution painting on your desktop. Wow. So that right there is makes the whole mobile and and desktop application synergy really important because you can go out in the field, sketch out a low res, low impact file on your little wimpy mobile processor, bring it home, ramp up the resolution and give it to the big guns in your quad core, eight core, whatever home system, unless you're Serge and you won't buy a new PC. But <laughs> <laughs> actually this kind of got me thinking. So if I can replay this, I can actually draw in a low res right now and I can replay it later. I believe so. In, in, high, in higher res. Huh? And if that doesn't work, I didn't tell you that. Um, All right. Who's, got we'll iPad? Who's doing this on their iPad? Not me. Yeah. Not me. Not me. Not me. I'm a, they're beautiful little devices, but I am dedicated to Android, so. I yeah, no, I'm going to have to figure out where, the, where it is actually in the program. And it, it's always there. You just can't find it immediately. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, let me see if I can just quickly block in some of the rest of this using the paint roller tool. What I like about the paint roller tool is it is a it does allow for some wet on wet brush or color mixing. And you'll get to see that right now as I work into this area that has some black paint on it, and you can see that the paint's mixing in a little bit and making kind of creating a dirty brush feel, and I really like that. Um, something that's really wonderful about Art Rage is each tool has a bunch of presets for the tools that already exist. And the presets are, are pretty much, I'd say they're 90% of what you need. 
And if you want to tweak anything, you can create your own settings and then save your own preset, at, you know, called Daniel's Dry Brush or uh, My Favorite Brush or whatever. And you create your own presets and you can bounce between those as you like. And I think the presets are helpful because then you don't spend time sitting in the menus. You just click the button for the preset you want, for the action, or the brush action you want, and then go. And I think that's the whole deal is when I'm painting, I, the reason I like painting more than a lot of mediums is I like how direct it is. Like in photography, how you take the picture, or at least traditionally, then you have to go to the dark room, and that whole dark room process is another, it's another art, it's another experience, and it, it takes, it, it's got its own time element that I don't want to deal with. When I paint, I just love the directness of the paint on the canvas, and I see every everything that's going to happen right then and there in front of me. And so um, the presets help me get all that, the tool out of the way and just worry about painting. I'm not going to worry about making today's painting all that special. What I really want to focus on is what happens after this. So let me just quickly block this in. I'm not going to worry about it. Because I, I've been doing a lot of art rage slash Photoshop work, and I, I've been having a lot of fun with it because typically digital painting is cool but I, I look at a lot of concept artist work and I look at a lot of what people are doing and it, it all feels so clean and you have to really work to make digital painting dirty because I like the things that happen the serendipitous things that happen in real paint when what I like about um, art okay. rage in particular is that you can erase stuff, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Wouldn't it be awesome if you could oil paint erase? Yeah. No <laughs> kidding. Well, you can scrape it off, but... Um, yeah. yeah, that's true. So, almost done here. I'm just going to go for coverage more than, than pretty here. So, let's just see. So how's everybody doing this week? Great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah good. good. I just I went for a bike ride right before the show, or a little while before, and was able to get it in and finish like seconds before it started pouring. So. Oh that was, really? <laughs> that was lucky. That's awesome. Um. I don't have a real clear in my idea in my head of what a Martian sunset looks like, so I'm just going to make it orange. It looks like vulva. It, it looks like what? Like vulva. <laughs> Didn't you ever see the image of Mars from the prior explorations that... I, yeah. you know, I have seen some of them, but I, they're not stuck in my head. Well, there was one that was post. I posted it a while ago. It's definitely, um, yeah, Mars looks like... A series of pink bumps with hair growing out of crevices. <laughs> <laughs> I'll post it again later on my profile so you can I'll see. I'll make it. sure to check it out. Yeah, that's awesome. It's definitely a strange, <laughs> very strange image. <laughs> I I thought that's what you said. But I was like, did yes. you just say that? All right, um, I'm gonna <laughs> pretend well, you know, I don't know. It. <laughs> All I'm right. an artist. I say things like that. Yeah, I I just. Just didn't know if my mic was cutting out on me. So, yeah. all right. Um, so yeah, this is taking me a little longer than I wanted to. So let's just press the move here. My husband actually told me the name of the mountain is Sharp Mountain. Oh really? Yeah, but it doesn't have an e on the end, so I guess we're not related. <laughs> not related. That's that'll break your heart. Yeah, I know. Yeah, to, but Tim, you you brought the. This has been a summer of fun, man. What the heck? <laughs> That's awesome, man. Good for you. Yeah. It's been a little while since I. Hey, I, I didn't get a chance to watch it yet, but uh, how was the the interview you did? Was that with that was with Forbes? Yeah, that was awesome. The guy from Forbes was a fantastic interviewer. It's the best interview I've ever had. Just because the questions were great, and the oh, and by the way, I just switched to the palette knife tool. I'm just kind of softening a few edges, so I don't have the same edge quality all the way around. But yeah, the interviewer was awesome. He was great. He was really intelligent, and he asked probing questions. It was basically the interview. Um, it, it orbited three 
general ideas, education, technology, and art, which are my three top faves, right? So sure, sure. Um, I felt very competent in that in that discussion, and yes, yeah, some it was just a blast. I, cool. I'll definitely I'll, have to check it out then, man. Yeah, thanks. That, that that's cool. Um, between that and the uh, the girl thing, yeah, it has been a killer summer. Let me ask you about this palette knife thing that you're using, because I tried it as well, and I was expecting a palette knife to behave in a more traditional manner as, you know, sort of a way of loading up paint, and it doesn't seem to really do that. I, it was more like a razor's edge, you know, kind of scraping. Yeah. Is there a way to load it with paint or not? There is. Uh, if I go into settings, which you probably can't see because of some funky... Yeah, I can see. Oh, you can. Okay. You can... Here's the loading, and you can add paint through the loading there, and... And then it'll it'll act as a paint applicator, not just a paint okay. manipulator. Um, yeah, so I, you know it's actually quite cool. Right now, I'm, I've just got it loaded up, all loaded up, 100 percent, and you can start to see it's interacting with the, oh, yeah. the paint body that's already there. So it's yeah. a little funky, but it's still working. Um, and it's nice; it, it creates a real choppy mark that feels really good with the paint roller tool. So anyway, this is probably close enough to move on to step two. What I'll do is just go to Look file. Look how fast you did that. You're killing me. I know. <laughs> Mind blowing. Well, hey, we'll come well, back and make it good. This is just our stage one. Well, it's also familiar territory for you, right? Yeah, um, girls in space helmets. Ah, and, yeah, yeah <laughs> girls in space. <laughs> that's familiar territory for me. That's awesome. I would love to be known for that. Um, well, you know, it could happen. Uh, <laughs> oh, whoops. Hold on here. Do an exhibition. Yeah, what the heck, right? Okay, so let's see. Let's drop out of here. You can see the image from last week. Oh, I love this this image. Hey, you, know, you just thanks. put this up a few days ago, and I was like, oh, man, that's a, a great, great painting. I love We're it. going right at that for the technique today, all right? So, oh, cool. cool. So that'll probably... If that, if that one was kind of something you like, then we'll, we'll play with that. Um, that was fun to make. I love that kind of stuff. So what I'm, whoops. So what I'm going to do right now is just go full screen. And then uh, it's just going to be off screen for you, but I'm going to go into my image. Uh, my, I have a reference file full of textures. So I'm just going to pull in some. This is a picture of a lake bed, or I'm sorry, a little stream bed. And I'm just going to resize it proportionally, holding shift key. And then... Um, I'm going to go into my blend modes and just start knocking around. And most likely, I'm going to enjoy something called hard light or soft light or overlay. Let's go back to vivid light and let's keep that one. Then I'm going to go back to that reference image folder and grab. This is just a picture of the of some old uh, sandstone pavers that are in my neighborhood. Toss that in there. And uh, let's see here. I'll go with linear light. This is just a different blend mode in Photoshop, and I'm going to take the opacity down. I'll actually knock the opacity down on the previous layer as well. Now I've got those two. And um, let's see. Go with this one. No, not that one. Let's do this one. I'm going to bring in some linear elements with this. That aren't really, there's not really any precedent for them in the image, but um, I like making the mess. So, mind blowing. Yeah, really fun stuff. And then what I want to do now is add a new layer in Photoshop just by hitting this little tabby down here. You can just create a new layer just like that. And then I'll go to my gradient tool and I'm I'm just going to use presets because we're in a time crunch and I don't want to be too particular about it. But let me uh, find a little bit different palette of colors here. I'm going to get this yellow and blue one because I want to change the tones of this. And I'll go to the radial gradient. And I'm just going to create a little tonal variety here, or a chroma variety. Here. So. Yeah. You know, this reminds me of like a cave painting, actually. The way it starts to 
get textural and yeah. So I'm going to leave that one there. I'm going to duplicate this layer. And then I'm going to control T to transform and rotate that layer around so that the the yellow is in a little different spot. You can see that if I go to the normal blend mode, let me flip back to full opacity. And then uh, let's see here. Let's do let me go here with pin light and just yeah, something like that. I don't actually really like that too much. Let me rotate it back. It's almost like a step too far. Yeah. And, and, and so I can just soften that out by changing the opacity of the layers, you know. And I think then we're okay. Um, I'm actually going to put a picture of, of some grass. I took a picture of the summer grass here just after it was cut. And let's just see what happens. A lot of times, this is why it's so fun, is you just playing around. And, um, you know, the texture might be okay, but it's a little bit much, so I'll go to Filter, Blur, and then I'll go to the Gaussian Blur, whatever, however you say that. And soften the edges a little bit, just so I get almost like a reticulated look. And now I've got a big mess on top of my drawing. Mm -hmm. and. And that's okay. And so what then I'll do is go File, Save As. I don't care about what I just did, so I'm just going to export it as a JPEG. And Will you bring it back into ArtRage from here? Yeah. Okay, cool. And I call the file a point .1 version of what I was just working on. And then the ArtRage. And what I'll do is File, Import, Image, File to Layer. So I'll just pull that in right on top of the original drawing. And then hit enter to finalize that, OK, I'm serious. I want that. And it's going to take a little while because I made this file enormous. I mean, and then what's kind of cool about that is then I can dial down the opacity of this new layer. If And, and I can look at the blend of the, the original and the kind of hyper-textured layer. Um, and then what I'll do. I think it would be nice to have a little bit of both worlds in this drawing. I'll leave it right like that, and then I'll right click or I'll click on the little menu option of the layer, and I'm just going to merge the layer down. So I'm going to turn those two layers into one. So I'm back to where I started, and then I'm going to pull out. Is this helpful at all? Yeah, it's really interesting. It is. It's do you ever start with a texture? I mean, yeah, I, I do. The the okay. one of the girl on the motorcycle. I actually built that image with textures. I said I want the ground here, and I'm going to use this texture for the ground. And I mapped it all out. I did all my sort of blueprinting with different textures, and then painted on top of those. Um, yeah, but I you know just I I'm never really formulaic. Okay. I, I mean the. I, you, the thing I like about technology or paint or whatever is you can get to the end re same result so many different ways. Sure. Um, so sometimes I'll just, I just play around. Um, and I think that, so I'm learning banjo right now, and I've never played an instrument before, but what it's, what it's really good for is not just the fun of learning something or learning to play music, but the f kind of doing that metacognitive thing about learning something new and how that feels. So. When I'm playing banjo, let me draw and talk if I can manage that. One sec. I'm going to get the oil brush here, and uh, I'm just going to start scribbling on top of this. But um, what's really fun about learning the banjo is I get to think about my the way I learn. And I what I like about that is I can um, – what am I trying to say? Think, think, think. Um, I, there's so many things to learn. I have to learn what rhythm is, and I have to learn how to count rhythm without, you know, however I can manage that. And then I have all the fine motor control stuff of just where to put my fingers and that muscle memory business. And then I have songs I'm trying to learn, and then style and the different techniques. And there's so much, right? Um, and I know, I know that when I'm playing, 
is this really cool thing that happens. I'm playing and I'm playing and I'm playing and I'm trying to figure it out. And I just stop intuitively. I go, oh, okay, my brain's getting mushy. I've gone as far as I can go with this. I'm going to stop and do something else. And I'll do, I'll work from one technique into another, into another, into another, into another to try. Then I'll try to play a song until I get, until my brain gets mushy. And then I'll work on rhythm until my brain gets mushy. And then I just put it away. And I pretty much suck at all of it, right? And so I put the banjo down. And then I go to sleep. And something happens at nighttime where my brain puts it all together. And then the next day I pick up my banjo and I'm better than I was. I have all those different things, right? And then I play and I play and I play and I do work through that till my brain's mushy, that till my brain's mushy, and so on and so on and so on. And I put it down and the next night I get up, you know, and it's the same thing over and over. So I, when I'm painting, it's the same deal. Um, I'll, I'll try one thing, try another, try another, try another. And then I, if it doesn't really work, I go to sleep, come back the next day, and it's better. And I love that thing that happens. And I don't, I'm not really, I don't really have a, a point there other than just pretty fascinating to have all these different tools work together and to not maybe you don't really know how they're all going to work but um, I don't know something cool happens when you just get really and you just play with stuff you almost become the intuition just grows you know it grows at night it grows when you're not playing with it, it grows at, I don't know I just am encouraging playing you know what I mean mm-hmm. Uh, do you all know what I mean? With all Don't that? take those risks. Yeah, I'm following you. I'm with you. Yeah. PE, what, what were you saying? I was just going to say that if you don't take those risks and if you don't um, go further than you think you should go, if you don't break your pattern, you won't learn anything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the only reason I can follow you now this week when I didn't know what you were doing two weeks ago is because I've actually picked up my iPad and my stylus and my fingers and I've been working with it, you know? You have yeah. to have it to know. And uh, make a lot of mistakes. I didn't care. It's like, you know what? I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just going to go for it. <laughs> yeah. I, actually, I did something that I really liked. And it was so, Elaine, right did you there. just get a, a tablet? Is that is that what yeah, you're talking about? I did. Very cool. In its awesome. case right now. Whoa, all right. I know. So, um, and the funny thing with technology is that it's never useful until you have a, des a desire to make it useful, right? I mean, you have to have something in mind that takes you there. And I finally did. So, I mean, it's it's very different for me because what I was working with before was Photoshop and digital technologies as it related to photo, and I really had no further interest at all, like none. So um, I'm surprised that I have this, and I'm even more surprised is that I'm kind of proselytizing for it and telling people about it, and people are going out and getting this great program because it's so much more intuitive than all of the other programs that I could have ended up with. Isn't it? Are you loving that? Yeah, it's amazing, actually. Um, you know that the brushwork is a certain kind of thing, and I don't know. I don't want to talk anymore. I just want to watch what you're doing. <laughs> no, I, I love what, I love it when you're talking. I love hearing how you think about it. Um, I missed what you did on those white spots on the cheek. Um, were they palette? Cheeks? Yeah, they're palette with just a little bit of loading on the palette knife. Yeah. And See, so, I'm beginning to recognize it, which is a good thing too, because it doesn't. I don't need to have someone take me by the hand as much. Yeah, it, it is awesome to be able to, to watch and ask questions. But you're right; there's nothing like just kind of being familiar oh, and saying, "Oh, and I you bet." I care about it, right? And I just I realized that this was completely disposable, so I didn't have to be precious. And then when I found out you could erase things, wow, that was great. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Oh, look what I just did. I really don't like it. Oh, yay, I can erase it. So <laughs> just by going back, you know, that's all you have to do. Just keep going back. It's like Photoshop. So yeah, yeah that is so true. Daniel, I'm really loving some of these color choices and, and the, the kind of reflections you're putting on the, the glass of the helmet. Or, or yeah, think, totally I mean, unexpected. That's what I'm getting out of it. It's, it's I had no idea really where that nice ultimately was going to go, right? Oh, oh yeah. Well, I, I don't know that, and that right there, I think, is kind of the intuitive 
response when you've painted a lot. You just think, oh, I think some blue should go there because you you just screwed around with paint so long and you've had so many problems you've solved. You're like, oh. But you also have on your palette over there. Yeah, that's in, that's on purpose. Right? You have something that was sort of into it. You intuitively are responding absolutely to what you're doing, but you also have a palette that you pre-selected by having that image in the back of your schema, right? What is that image in the corner? Is that a, uh, a photo or trees sideways, right? Yeah. Do you want to? So that that's the last piece of this puzzle is that tonight I knew that I was going to do this with you guys, and I knew that I didn't want to spend all night over here on the palette picking colors. So what I did is I took a picture of some trees at the river, and it, it's yeah, sideways, so it usually looks like this. And it was a really basic image of some trees, just you know, typical colors, um, just every, you know, everything you'd expect. And what I did was took it into a little web-based application called Pixel, Pixelmatic or something like this by Autodesk. And what it does is it, it does cross-processing, which you can do in Photoshop by hand, which is kind of um, manipulating the color exposure of the film or the image. And it does that kind of, it, it does this retro vintaging of cross, through cross-processing and kind of some cheesy effects. But what I like to do is like to take a normal image into, into that software. It's all web-based, so I just upload it from my computer, do all the manipulation, and then download it. And this has been processed three or four different times with different overlays of color and cross-processing. And the deal, the, the, the reason I like it is I get, I play with it until I get a color palette that I like. And then I just use that palette not as an image reference, but as a color reference. And I source that just to pull from. And so I use that for every color that's in here has come from this image. Gotcha. Very cool. That was probably a long-winded explanation. But. Just to, to explain cross-processing further, it's an analog process. And what happens in cross-processing in analog film-based photography is that you take a certain color temperature of film and you process that temperature in its opposite manner by sending it through opposite chemistry. So if you had slide film, for example, you would shoot it and process it as if it was negative film. And so what it does, because film has a sort of additive and subtractive property, whether it's slide film or whether it's... Um, whether it's negative film, and if you process them in opposition, you prioritize other colors. So just that's like the technical explanation for what happens when you cross-process. So if you're doing something in a digital program that's cross-processing, essentially you're going into an opposition of color from what you would have expected to see there. So a yellow sky instead of a cyan sky, for example. That was an awesome description of that. Thank you. I love it. That was huge. My photo background leaks out every now and then. <laughs> Actually, I was known as the queen of cross-processing. Oh, Truth were you? Yes. What a deal. So I was doing it back in the, um, let me think, when I started doing it, probably late 80s, early 90s. And not only did I cross-process film processes, I also cross-processed light processes. Whoa. So. In the studio, I would set up with, um, you know, a color temperature that was strobe daylight, and I would use, um, which you can't even buy anymore, I don't think, I would use tungsten-based film. So there would already be one crossover, and then I would cross over in the, in the chemistry as well, and, you know, I ended up with things that actually looked very much as if they were true colors, but just a slight distortion. And what I was able to do which was really interesting to me. I was doing some work with the body, and I was able to bring the blues and the cyans closer to the surface of the skin, so you would see veins and stuff in a way that Ooh, you would actually cool. see. That was really cool. It was really cool. I mean, I really loved it, but that's kind of what you're doing, right? It's the recipe. You know the recipe, and you start to, you start to play with it a lot more because you're more comfortable with the initial recipe. Yeah. yeah. Ah, this is the beauty of a hangout right here. It's getting the have the experience and expertise of a lot of different media come together. That is cool. Um, I'm just going to add a little cooler color to the shadow here and then pull in. Mm. A little much there. So yeah, me... this is a little too... Well, but you know, 
Maybe it isn't for a reflected dome. Yeah. Right? We want to correct it. We want to polarize it, but maybe it should be that distorted. And I love that I can just, I have, I honestly, as I'm painting, I have my finger, the other hand on control Z. Mm -hmm. And that's just awesome. I, because it's the, for all those that don't, it's just undo, and, and that's great. Um, and then I, what I have right now is the what is this tool? The chalk tool, and I'm just using it almost like a dodge and burn tool because there's no dodge and burn in this program. I can it sort of mists a dark or a light value on top of whatever I'm doing based on the color I'm choosing. What is so, the one you're using? What is what are you? Uh, it's the chalk tool, and I took the pressure down all the way to just five percent. So it's just Almost like a smudge, right? It, it's like uh, it's almost as though I'm spray misting value or color onto the palette. So if I it, it does that, you know, I have a dark color, or if I it'll do this if I have a light color, but right. it doesn't fully mask the colors beneath, and so it, it, it's sort of like uh, dodge and burn a little bit because there's mm -hmm. I just wish there was dodge and burn in this program. Well, there is in Photoshop, so back and forth, right? Back and forth, we'll do it. Um, here's what I want to do. I'm just going to export this image file as the um, 101.2 now, and it looks like a radio station. <laughs> and I'm going to show you that web-based software that I was talking about, just so that you all know exactly how I do my stuff so you can steal it. <laughs> okay. You know, so I might steal it, but I would do something very different with it. Yeah, right. Uh, Except, so we, you know, what's strange for me, Daniel, is, of course, we have a very similar um, archive that we're working with. It's yeah. going to be interesting for me to see if I end up kind of slipping into your territory a little bit. I'm not as good as you are and likely never will be. Oh, okay. But it's, you know, it's just interesting to see that different people approach the same material differently. Yeah, all the better. I'm excited about that. That would be great. Um, so this is that tool that I was telling you about. What's the URL there? I can't it's, read it. It's called pixlr.com. And let me go back. Here it's, I just have it as an app installed in my Chrome browser. OK, cool. That's so funny. It puts it in a darkroom tray. That's hilarious. Isn't that, it's kind of endearing, I think. <laughs> so. That's crazy. Oh my god. So you can page through them one by one, or you can run to the end if you want to. I'm going to use the monochromatic one. I want to see them. The, I'm totally into monochromatic. I, I don't. My values are maybe aren't quite strong enough for that, but in this particular image, but not a, not too bad, I guess. I kind of like the cyan's coming up in that one, or, but I, I'm going to go for the overly dramatic, soft, focused edges, cheese of that a little bit. Um, and then you can put these overlays on top, and you know, and it, it's this is basically like Insta Instagram or something, right? right. But um, you know, I kind of like, like that. This one? Yeah. Yeah, it, it looks kind of meaty. I, I like I like how there's a lot of image lost, and so then we just say save, and then download to the computer, and say this one or whatever the title is going to be. And it's a giant file, so it doesn't know what to do with it. When you say giant, how big is it? Uh, well, it's 20, 20 by 20 at like 300 DPI. 300, uh, 20 by 20 print. At, yeah. yeah, that's pretty big, actually. Yeah. So in here, and I think it has some cool feel. Um, and then if I wanted to, what I would do is, let's try this. Looks like an album cover, man. <laughs> an album cover. <laughs> it really does. I mean... That's really that, retro. So then what I would like to do is, I love that album cover reference. I'll, I'll take it. So here we go. I'm going to grab kind of this um, green... It's the background. What, it's, that, it's that triad of pathways in the background. And that rust color, there's something weird. Something, something, something in there. It's got a lot of energy. Oh. It, you guys, energy. are you having fun with this? I love it. It's pretty I mean, crazy. I'll have more fun if I was doing it myself. 
But yeah, I know, right? You're like, get me out of this. Hang out. Like it's, it's just so bizarre to watch it happen so quickly, that's all. I, I find that my brain isn't fully hooked into what I'm seeing because there's just too much to see. Good um, thing it's a hangout on air. I can watch it later. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, well, here, what I'm, gonna, what I'm doing right now is... Over again. Yeah, and <laughs> slow got, it down. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Um, I've just created a new layer, and I'm using the, the art pen tool, and I'm putting in little dots, a couple lines, maybe some cross-hatching, and I, just adding a little bit more mess to the image. I don't like the dots on her eyes. Yeah, you know, it's like, what? what's this? I love this, though. I love this. So I, what I can do is I can try stuff out, and then I can soften the opacity until it almost goes away. And I, what I, I just like that I can play with it. I'm like, oh, do it. Because in a normal painting, I would never do that. No, I would be too scared. Yeah. But you know, I think that's why I'm in love with this thing. <laughs> yeah. You spend, you because you know you put that dot in there, like, oh, well, I have to repaint the face now. Yeah. And that's good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to wait for it to dry, and now I've got to paint over the paint. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, yeah, been, I mean, I've been working in ink wash, and every, every freaking choice is, is life or death with the thing, it seems like. You know what I found? I, I was using a paper called Yupo. Do you know this paper? It's oh. kind of, um, I think it, I've heard of it. I've never used it. Well, you know, it kind of came on the market as a, a prosumer kind of glossy? paper. It's, well, it's a plasticated archival paper. So it's hmm. like mylar, except more written, like it can take more. And it really? can it can take uh, watercolor and gouaches and stuff. So being the brave idiot that I am as an artist, right. first thing I did was go into the studio when I decided I was going to draw again after you know doing photo. I figured I'm going to go and use mylar, but no, I had to go and get Yupo. And then a friend of mine told me about this paint called Flash, which is a vinyl paint and it dries immediately. So you know, previously I'd worked with oil on mylar. I go into the studio and I start working with flash and every brush dries immediately and you can't paint over it. So I, I learned the hard way, right? Um, but what you can do is you can wash it off. So if you really screw up, you can go back in and before it fully dries, you can kind of erase what you just did. But mm. you know what you have to do though is you have to plan the painting from the bottom up, huh. which I've never had to think about, you know how it all goes together in that kind of way. When you work with photo, it's a very different thing. So very humbling, but very important. Easy after. Be, I, I just adore being able to share some art time with you. Thank you for sharing all that. <laughs> you this, mean for talking too much? I'm your gal. Uh, <laughs> please talk too much on every <laughs> hangout that I'm in. <laughs> I love it. No, definitely. It's a, it's a pleasure. To have both of you guys, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's an education. Every well, time. tell me about stories too. You don't have to keep them to yourself. <laughs> That's right, man. We tell know. us about well, your, your here, I, I, well, you kill her. I'll show you something. Because uh, when he started laying in those background textures, I was thinking, because a lot, you know, you guys have seen most of my my ink wash stuff I, I do on white, right? So yeah. I've done a, done a lot of things like this. I love that. Stuff. With, with watercolor, a little, little subtle color added. Nice. But I've done a few. Yeah, I um, can't do stuff like that. It kills me. I look at what you do, and it's like envy. I know oh, he's good. I, I really appreciate that. So but a good. couple of times, I've used a, a paper that I've uh, treated. It's it's a watercolor paper that I threw like lemon juice or cranberry juice or something on, and then I actually baked it in the oven, and then I've painted on the top of that. So, Whoa! Cool. So you get the. It, it was interesting cause, because Daniel's talking about all these textures, and I was like, "Oh, I've, I've done a little of that in the, yeah. the real world realm," but but the ability to just kind of swap it out. Hey, so, listen, artists don't so want to leave it alone, right? We want to mess it up. Yeah. So, like, I, I had kind of done this random messy thing. This one is interesting because those horizontal lines, I forgot uh, to put any. Anything underneath the paper when I baked it, so those are the lines from the oven. You know, the, 
<laughs> that's actually way cool, man. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's kind you of know, And that's what you actually want, right, is to be able to find paper that you can manipulate like that because... Well, you so, can, yeah, sometimes. It depends. Well, I found that film at a certain point became too stable. So I couldn't do things that I had previously been able to do because I used to boil and heat up and freeze and do all kinds of stuff to film to get reticulation and stuff. You would process mm -hmm. it different ways, process it with Coca-Cola, you know, so it would, it would sort of create that kind of vigorous bubbling. And uh, you can't do that anymore because film stock is just too stable. They made mm -hmm. plastics too, too um, yeah, stable. So, yeah, it, it's funny, I was telling an, our artist, uh, another artist, about the, this process I was going through where I was splashing this stuff on paper, and you, know, and you, wouldn't, you wouldn't have any idea what the texture was going to be until you had actually baked it in the oven and then brought it back out. And, you know, and, and baking paper in the oven is not exactly the smartest thing because it's flammable. <laughs> um, so, it, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's this kind of risky, crazy thing where the whole house smells like burned paper for mm -hmm. a day or two. And well, you know, Ansel like, Adams. Why don't you just use brown, you know, watercolor and, and throw that around? <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm an idiot. <laughs> well, it's, it's recipe fixing, right? Yeah. I mean, Ansel Adams used to dry his paper prints in the microwave oven <laughs> because he wanted to work fast and he wanted to see what he was getting. And, uh, you know, there's a film of him taking his prints from the darkroom straight into the microwave <laughs> in the of his house, cooking up his prints. So, yeah. Wow. <sighs> well, you guys. Uh, I dig it, Daniel. I really dig it. Yep. That was fun, fun, fun. Thank you for being a part of it. Thank you for having us, man. Awesome. Yeah, my pleasure. I'm glad I saw it pass through my stream. That I was able to jump in. It's great. Um, my my mentor was an old Italian guy who was raised in the Bronx, and every time he would send me a letter or sign something that he gave me, he would always say, uh, "Keep swinging that brush. You need brush mileage, Daniel. You need brush mileage." So every day, um, I think of him and I think of that, and I think uh, I, I'm only happy painting when. I feel like it's so intuitive that, that you know, like PE, we were talking about how we, you, you, you're so analytical and people talk about intuition, but really it's just the result of all that analysis and practice, practice, practice. I, I want to practice so much that I don't even have to, I never have to think it just happens. It feels like it's just like breathing. So here's to that, I guess. Yeah. Here's <laughs> to breathing. Here's. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to that. Uh, I have some Dr. Pepper over here. <laughs> I have a glass um, of water. <laughs> I have the end of my Pim's cup, so cheers. All right, hold on, hold on. And I heard you have to, when you do cheers, you have to look people in the eye, otherwise you have bad luck. Oh, <laughs> mention on there. So cheers. Cheers. Eye right, contact, eye contact, eye contact. Yep, yep, all the way across. <laughs> <laughs> well, Thanks, y'all, and thanks, Google, for making a tool that lets that every man like uh, every person like you and I be content creators. Isn't this amazing? That we can Blows me away every time. We can host a show and we can record our. I remember you have to used to have to buy Camtasia or some really expensive software to record your screen. Yeah. Now anyone can do it, and it's free. And Google is for some reason doing all that work on their servers, so I don't have to. I mean, this is unbelievable. Yeah, it's, so. it's, yeah. it's amazing. Uh, a year into this thing, and I'm still blown away every time. Well, thanks again, you guys. Hopefully, we'll see you on here painting more. Um, I've got a busy week, but I'll be on here as much as I can. And uh, Please tag me in your post if you do some cool art rage stuff, because I sometimes lose track otherwise. Sounds right. like a plan, Daniel. Thanks again, Daniel. Hey, see you guys. Good see night. you guys. See you guys.